It's that time of year again where we look back on what happened in the world of 3D printing and my prediction for what's to come in 2023. Let's get started. 2022 was wild, with the world reeling from the pandemic wreaking havoc on supply chains, chip shortages, and the ongoing war in Ukraine. It's been a lot. But despite all of these events, we actually saw a ton of innovation in the 3D printing space this year, and it's a great sign of things to come. So let's get into it. Number one, the 3D printing market bottomed out, finally. Since 2018, with the introduction of the now infamous Ender 3, 3D printers have become increasingly affordable, which is a good thing for sure. However, this bare bones i3 bed slinger kicked off a race to the bottom, never before seen in the 3D printing space, as companies competed with one another to push the price point lower and lower in order to get the sale. Instead of innovation, we just saw scores of identical looking machines with almost no variation or quality control, and it kind of sucked. Yes, the Ender 3 still holds a lot of value. In fact, I'll be doing a video shortly on why I still use a stock Ender 3 to test my designs, but we didn't really see much true innovation from companies. It existed, but it was drowned out by the cheapest 3D printer mentality. In the background, however, the community of people who bought these machines were incredibly busy. Hobbyists bought these budget machines and upgraded the crap out of them forming gigantic international communities to improve firmware, print upgrade parts, and add comfort features like bed level probes and wireless connectivity. In effect, doing all the product development the original company should have been doing in the first place. In 2022, however, something changed significantly. Sure, you can still buy an original Ender 3 for some reason, but companies started to release 3D printers that came with actually good mesh leveling removable print beds with self-releasing PEI surfaces, and wireless connectivity that doesn't suck. This new class of i3 3D printers represents a fresh wave of innovation, and yes, there's still a lot of um, inspired design choices going on and borrowed innovations, but we haven't seen this level of variation for years. And the prosumer market landscape got a shake up too, with new players such as Anchor and Bamboo Lab entering the space seemingly out of nowhere with incredibly advanced 3D printers to compete with the likes of Ultimaker and MakerBot. Or should I say um, Ultimaker, as the two companies merged this year, we'll see how that works out for them. These new machines, however, have only just hit the market and they're already showing huge promise. This is a carbon fiber nylon fan blade I printed on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and it's almost perfect. Video on that coming very soon. Finally, at the upper end, the industrial 3D printing space has seen some really incredible innovation this year. There's a lot of players, each with their own unique angle, and I have no idea how it's going to play out, but I highly recommend going over to Joel's channel, 3D Printing Nerd, where he's got a whole collection of interviews with some of the most advanced 3D printing companies on the planet right now. I personally like the angle 6K Additive is going with, a metal 3D printing company where they've figured out a process to get uniform grain size out of recycled stainless steel so you can use it on the machines. And did you know you can now buy shoes off the shelf with a flexible 3D printed lattice thanks to a collaboration between Carbon 3D and Adidas. That is wildly cool to me. We're still light years away from this tech reaching lowly hobbyists like myself, and there's no hint on an affordable metal 3D printer quite yet, but who knows, maybe next year. But that's what's happened in the world of 3D printing in 2022. What are my predictions for 2023? Let's start with number one. The war for the prosumer market will begin again. Wait, again? Well, yes. Since I got into 3D printing over 10 years ago, there were machines I would class as prosumer, costing between one to $5,000 that fit well into an office or educational environment for prototyping and projects. These are 3D printers you buy explicitly for the purpose of printing well and reliably. A 3D printer as a tool, not as a hobby. There's no reason a hobbyist can't own one of these 3D printers, but yeah, they tend to be at the higher end. And I'm being completely honest in saying that up until now, 95% of the 3D printers occupying the prosumer market segment have sucked. <laughs> They've been unreasonably unreliable, tied down to proprietary consumables, requiring buggy outdated slices, and of course, not to mention the incredibly expensive spare parts that are almost impossible to get when you finally need them. It actually got to the point where I stopped accepting these machines for review because 
they were so incredibly frustrating and the pressure was so high to produce a good video because they cost like $5,000. It has to be good, right? Well, no. However, if what I've seen in the past few months is anything to go off, 2023 will see the war for the prosumer market start all over again. But this time from a whole new batch of companies that the old guard really needs to take notice of. Take Bamboo Lab, for example. This machine, despite having its own issues, which will be covered in future videos, doesn't just compete with the current batch of printers at its price point from huge established companies, but completely leapfrogs them in terms of speed, capability, and reliability. And this is just the start. These machines will become increasingly refined and increasingly better value. And if I was a company who's been sitting on the same model of 3D printer for four years with little to no iteration, then I'd be pretty damn worried. They'll need to adapt fast or they simply won't survive. Prediction number two, there will be an increasing need for easy to use CAD. As 3D printers become more reliable and easier to use, the scope of people who want to use them as a tool will also grow. And in my opinion, it's unrealistic to expect these people to know how to use complex CAD packages such as Fusion 360, which is great software for sure, but it's expensive and has a steep learning curve. Instead, I predict that we're gonna need the 3D equivalent of word art for this new demographic. I know it's an old reference, but I really can't think of a better analogy. And when it comes to easy to use CAD or computer aided design, there's already some options on the market, such as Tinkercad, which has been my recommendation since it became available in 2011 for beginners with an easy to use drag and drop interface where you combine primitive shapes in creative ways to create your models. But I predict we're going to go even simpler with a huge increase of apps with built-in design wizards for stuff like cake toppers, desktop accessories, name badges, and toys. Silhouette is on the right track with their Silhouette 3D software with an environment aimed at scrapbookers and cake makers instead of engineers, but it's unfortunately completely locked down to their single 3D printer, which I wasn't much of a fan of when I reviewed it back in 2019. Prediction number three, companies will begin embracing 3D printing as a means of alleviating supply chain issues. It's no secret that shipping anything anywhere at the moment is incredibly expensive, and it doesn't look like that's going to change much in 2023 but it's essentially free to send digital models in seconds anywhere in the world. And I think companies will start embracing this for spare parts and upgrades that make sense for the 3D printing process. I've been advocating for this for years, but it's actually finally starting to happen now for real with printables partnering up with the likes of Noctua and Cooler Master and many others to host a range of 3D printable parts to suit their products. And with a reliable 3D printer, anyone can just download the spare part they need and print it out that very same day, instead of waiting potentially months for it to arrive in the mail. Now, obviously this won't solve everything. We can still only print in plastic and the parts will never be as accurate or as strong as injection molded parts, but it should make a pretty significant impact on the way that consumers view the items they own. And I'm seriously excited to see this space explode over the coming year. Prediction number four, anyone will now have access to industrial manufacturing technologies. Although 3D printing services like Shapeways have been around for ages, it's been a lot harder traditionally to get parts made using more industrial level processes like CNC machining, laser cutting and injection molding. To do that kind of thing, you usually had to approach a local manufacturer if you're lucky enough to have one, who would usually tell you to just get lost with your tiny one-off job or charge you a small fortune for the privilege and if you wanted to get anything injection molded, well, you'd have to find yourself a mold design engineer and then make sure you're sitting down when they quote you the price. However, over the past year, this huge valley between 3D printed prototype parts and professional end use parts has been bridged with online services like PCBWay offering CNC services at incredibly competitive rates with actual engineers looking over your parts to ensure that they can be made. They didn't sponsor this video by the way, but I did work with them to build my combat robot recently and it was a really good experience. And for hobbyists like myself, this is pretty huge. And in 2023, I predict it's gonna become even better as other companies take note of this largely ignored market segment. And I've also since noticed that Shapeways now also offers a suite of industrial processes beyond 3D printing. Because although 3D printing is awesome, sometimes you just need that part to be made out of metal. These services will allow you to create those parts 
for a reasonable price. Prediction number five, hobbyists will have to start taking plastic recycling into their own hands. Here in Australia, we are disgustingly terrible at recycling. We used to have these soft plastic recycle bins at the shops where a company, Red Cycle, would take them off to be recycled. Well, as it turns out, they were unable to offload all of their inventory and were instead simply stashing it in warehouses. Over 3,000 tons of the bags were found across nine warehouses. And that's a dedicated recycling service. For unmarked plastics like waste 3D prints, they've got no chance and go straight into landfill. And it's become clear that it's up to us, the hobbyists, to do something about that. Last year, I suggested that a cellulose-based filament could potentially be developed, which would fully biodegrade, but I'm no chemist and nothing has come from that. So the next best thing is to find ways to creatively reuse waste plastics. Brothers Make have tons of great video ideas on their channel about recycling plastics into new objects, and many of the processes they present would work with waste 3D prints, and similarly, Uncle Jesse just did a really fun video melting down plastic PLA scraps uh, into silicon molds using a cheap portable oven, and the results were really promising. But you can also print using recycled plastics by making yourself a PET bottle recycling machine. There's a huge range of projects to choose from, but all of them turn a PET bottle into strips and then into little straws that you can just simply feed into any regular filament 3D printer and bump up the extrusion multiplier to get awesome results. I've been tempted to make one, but one of the few things we have working in Australia is our bottle buyback scheme. So I'm happy to let those just get collected for now. But if you'd like to see me give it a go, let me know in the comments below. But those are my predictions. What do you think we're gonna see in the world of 3D printing in 2023? Do you think we'll continue to see innovation or will we start another race to the bottom? Will our partners and family start to show interest in 3D printing because they can now design and print the things that they want or will they continue to kind of not care? <laughs> let me know your thoughts in the comments below and have a great, fantastic new year. Catch you later guys, bye.